Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez back again. We're going to be testing the 8550 from Epson, the EcoTank 8550 on Red River Paper. It's going to be this one, Ultra Pro Gloss. And we're going to be using Red River's own profile for it to see how good of an output we can produce. I'm going to be using a rather demanding image here, very, very colorful. Um, I think it's a maple tree in the fall. It is amazing, the color that it has. So we're going to go ahead and load that, and we'll see what we get, okay? So we'll be right back. Okay, so we are here in Q Image. That paper that I just showed you happens to be 11 by 17. We're going to go ahead and double check that we have a half inch border, which we do. Remember, you just click on this second option here and then the third one directly over to the right and then enter a given width border. That will then give you this. As you can see, this is going to be something. Let's see if we can produce a really good result from this image. As you can tell, it has a lot of yellows, oranges, and sort of subdued gray oranges. And of course, the bark of the tree. I wish it had a lot more green, but again, you have to work with what you have. So let's go ahead and double check all our settings. We have the Epson 8550. We have Ultra Premium Photo Glossy chosen which is what I should use because that was a premium glossy paper, 11 by 17 in rear feeder portrait mode and the Red River Ultra Pro Gloss Epson ET8550 profile. So we'll let it load. I am quite sure that the settings on the driver have been set to none. That is what happens now under the artificial intelligence mode that QImage is utilizing. In other words, I really do not have to enter the driver for most, if not all of my printing. We're almost there. And there we go, it's gonna to begin to feed. We'll go ahead and jump back to me to see what kind of results we get. Alrighty, so we are back here again. Let me move over my player so I can then keep track of it. The printer is loading up. It woke up from its little nap this afternoon. And so far, yeah, I'm, I'm down to maybe this level here in my inks. I don't usually use the actual uh, ink level indicator. It's just a guess. You got to visualize it yourself directly from the tanks. So in the next video, we're going to be running some Epson papers and see how they react to using Epson ICC profiles custom. When I say custom, I mean they created the profiles for those particular papers, not me, okay? So recently I did some profiling of my own for Epson's uh, premium gloss and I got some very nice results. I may have shown you this one on my live stream this weekend and it looks just like it now this paper is a little bit strange it has kind of a yellowish base to it so by itself it has a warm look to it so when you add an image it's going to have a slightly warm tint to it now when you profile a paper it takes into account that aspect in other words that additional warmth that it adds and it tends to kind of neutralize that. Now, I'll show you something that's going to be rather interesting. Let me orient it the right way. Take a look at that. Those are some glass dishes on a, on a rack. And it looks like it's black and white, doesn't it? But it's not. It's a color image. It's a color image. If you really look very, very closely, you can see little areas that have a bit of color. But I did that after I did my profile 
and wow it just hit it out of the ballpark this is on epson premium gloss again using my custom profile so far so good no problems at all is my printer a little bit crooked i think it might be gotta straighten that out i cannot have a crooked printer on my table no way so as you can see this machine is amazing if i can produce that kind of work imagine going back say several years ago even a decade ago when i was working with something as early as the epson uh, 1400 and that was a dye ink printer i believe it was six colors only and i wasn't able to get this kind of fidelity yeah it produced great results because i hadn't seen anything better the minute i bought a pro 100 the same thing occurred with my canon pro 9000 mark ii i saw the difference immediately even though i was satisfied greatly with the results i was getting prior to these updates so yeah if you haven't seen a better result you will be very satisfied with what you have right now so far because i have access to other printers that are way higher end than this machine i really can't complain i'll be honest with you i cannot complain at all the results that i am getting and even after I tweak them even further by utilizing a custom profile, it's, it's just, what can I say? You know what I mean. I, I don't know what else to say. It really does work. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, I just took a, a peek at the, uh, the top portion of the photograph. And I got to refer back to my monitor here. Wow. Yeah. Let me take you there one more time. As you can see, this is kind of a, well, maybe that's just the way the tree is. There seems to be a lot of um, like greenish yellow tones here. And I hope I'm able to reproduce that. Right here, it almost looks like it's, I don't know. It looks a little bit strange. It lo almost looks like it's kind of a solarized type effect. Um, but that's just the way the image is. And I hope I can also reproduce that weird look to it. This is brightly lit, obviously, but look at this. It just seems a little bit odd to me anyway, visually, as I'm looking at it. This is not my, my photograph. This is someone else's photograph. I'm just now finally kind of analyzing it closely. All righty. We're about halfway done here. Let me take a drink. This thing is fantastic. I found it at my local store, Key Lime. Oh man, I am I am a nut for Key Lime pie. And this is kind of like the same taste. Mm. It's a very creamy protein type drink. Really delicious. Okay, the 8550 has a, a kind of a viewing light at the exit port. So you can sort of get a really good preview of what you're going to get and i think it's color balanced so it doesn't impart any kind of a um, color temperature shift to it and so far from what i see it's crazy we're going to illuminate this with just my crappy little led light banks and my monitor but you should be able to get a good idea what the performance of this printer is of course q image now defaults to the highest quality so it's taking forever to print but that guarantees that I will get the best dot per inch resolution that that paper can handle. And again, this is uh, Red Rivers Ultra Pro Gloss. If you are interested in Red River papers, don't buy the boxes right away. Buy the sample packs. Okay? Because enclosed in those packs, you will get two sheets of a family of type of media whatever you choose uh, fine art or regular photography or glossies or matte that sort of thing you'll be able to play around with your particular printer your particular image and or images and then choose something that you might fall in love with like I do sometimes 
I recommend their Palo Duro Burrita Papers. They are amazing. The results that you get, even on a dye ink printer, because the Burrita coating has a slight gloss to it, it just works beautifully with dye inks. Okay, so give that a try. Just order the sample pack sometimes, especially when they have, coming up pretty soon, Black Friday. Order them then and you may end up getting a discount on top of it. it actually, it's a very good way to buy um, samples of papers. I would recommend you buy, if you really fall in love with one of them, buy about two or three packs. You'll get six each that way at a very low cost, finally. All righty. The gloss of this paper is crazy. All right, so you're going to end up getting way too many reflections here, but I hope that I can angle it in a way that will display what we were just able to reproduce on this printer here. And I really wanted to use a, an image that was not going to make the job easy for that printer, one with a lot of colors, especially fall type colors. Okay, it's not really advancing much. So, oh, there we go. It's done. So at the very end, it's just going to do some overlapping. Wow. Okay, here we go. Look at that. That is insane. Anyway, this is amazing. This will be um, beautiful on a frame and should provide a lot of viewing pleasure. There you go. So that is it for now. We're going to go ahead, like I said, we're going to load some Epson papers and then go ahead and use their own proprietary profiles on that printer. They're made for that printer. So we'll be back. I hope you guys enjoyed this short. Actually, no, it wasn't very short. Yeah, anyway, you had to put up with the uh, waiting of the print. Uh, but anyway, we'll see you soon. So happy printing, everybody, and bye-bye.